Thank you for being here. We have Jessica Lewis, the founder of Rise Up Queens. And I get asked all the time, and I'm excited for Jessica to share a little bit more. What is Rise Up Queens? Mm, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, when I think about why we started Rise Up Queens, why I started Rise Up Queens, it was because I had so many challenges, right? Um, I grew up and struggled in relationships. I've been through a divorce. I had taken on this masculine type shell. Mm -hmm. I had developed protection mechanisms to protect myself and to keep people at a distance and just unknowingly operated that way through life. Like I thought I was this open, loving, caring, and I was that person and I was guarded. Mm -hmm. And so you put that person in a marriage and you're gonna lack intimacy and you're gonna lack connection and you're gonna lack things that could make a marriage really thrive. Like I would have thought, okay, yeah, I, I have okay relationships. And so when I met Skylar and we've been married 12 years now, I had a lot of work to do because I was really good at, yes, I loved him and connect with him, but I was really good at keeping him at a distance. And so I've been on this journey over the last 12 years of taking down those walls, like not well, some of the walls he helped me create, right? He cheated on me. Um, he didn't, he said things and he didn't do them. Like there's walls that he helped create, but then I came into the relationship with a lot of walls. And so I figured out that there was this freedom and I feel like it's the freedom that God has called us to live in as believers, but we don't live in it. Right. Like we walk around and we have if this was the potential in a relationship. Most of us are accessing this much of it or like this much of it. And then all of this is left. So I wanted to create Rise Up Queens so that these women could experience the freedom that's possible and connection and depth in relationships that I believe most women are just not experiencing. Yeah, that's good. When when did you officially start Rise Up Queens? Uh, well, we launched our first <clears throat> official live event last June. And I've been working with, so Skylar runs Rise Up Kings, mm -hmm. and I work one-on-one -on -one with the spouses, some of the spouses of the Rise Up Kings guys. So I'd been doing calls for them, and we had this call, and it was like, what hinders intimacy? And Skylar and I have done a lot of work on intimacy, and just even talking about intimacy and sex before used to be really challenging for me, and I would get really uncomfortable, and I would actually get really triggered, and I would make it like all about me and that I wasn't good enough. And so of years and years of working on it, I then bring this topic to this call and the call is an hour long. <laughs> and I'm like, this is going to be fun, right? <laughs> and I have ladies on the screen bawling their eyes out. Like this was not a fun call. Mm. This brought up a lot of hurt and a lot of pain and a lot of things that hadn't been dealt with. And I feel like the Lord was like, okay, like now you're doing them a disservice. Like now, like, yes, you want to talk about this deep stuff and you want to help women live in this freedom. And it's, it needs to be more than a call. Mm -hmm. It needs to be more than just a one hour time together. You need to walk them through a journey. And so that's part of why it came about also, because I, I wanted to dive into the stuff that hinders that stuff, mm -hmm. right? But it can't just be handled over Zoom. Like mm -hmm. it needs to be live and in person and where I can pray over someone mm -hmm. and pray with someone and be with someone and take them through a journey. And I'm sure for them too, it's it's just comforting that while that call was heavy, it's <laughs> this isn't just happening to me. <laughs> yeah. They probably had so much to say. Yeah. Um, just as women, we have so many insecurities and, um, yeah. that's incredible. And I feel like that happens a lot at the <laughs> events. Um, yeah. we work through an experience where we talk about the baggage that we carry. Like what's the stuff that you don't tell your friends? Mm -hmm. Like this is the stuff that like goes on in your head yeah. that you actually don't say out loud, yeah. right? Like I'm anxious or I don't feel worthy or I don't feel deserving yeah. or I'm not good enough. It's like those moments, like those, that quiet, still small voice, like of the devil or mm -hmm. like the lies that we believe that's not of the Lord. It's like, like we go through those things and women come out and it can be something as simple as anxiety. And they're like, I literally thought I was the only one. Wow. And like on the outside, my first thought was like, wait, how could she think she's the only one? But like literally like that's like we isolate ourselves yeah. so much and disconnect because we literally think we're the only one when they are not the only one because every other single woman in the room is dealing with that exact same thing. Yeah. It like it builds like such unity and such bond yeah. between yeah. them fellowship that's needed. Through. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if, if I decided that I wanted to go to a rise up Queens event and experience it, 
what, what does that look like? And what would I, what would I walk away with? Mm. So, um, the initial event is a two day experience. Okay. So we work through day one is all about, um, what I had kind of mentioned before the baggage that we carry. And it's not like you walk in and you're like, Hey, here's all my stuff. Here you go. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, I lead first. So we walk, you, when the ladies walk into the room, they see my baggage and we talk about my shame and my guilt and the stuff that I used to carry and the things that, um, that literally Jesus died on the cross to set us free from mm-hmm. and that I was forgiven of, but I was still caring. Mm-hmm. And some ladies were probably like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm not going there. Right. But like, that's costing them something like it's, it was costing me something to carry all that around. And it was heaviness and it was anxiousness and it was burden. So, um, we, day one, we go through like, what are you carrying? Right. And what does the Lord say about that? So a lot of the conversation is about their identity in Christ mm-hmm. and what's possible. And we talk through what being a feminine woman is, right? Because I I say often on my videos that society is telling women right now that you can be a mom and you can work full time and you can be a great wife. And like, there's a lot of stressed out ladies. Like it is hard. Like, and and I'm not saying don't work because I work, right? But it's taken intentionality from me to not bring the masculine side of me home. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to access this feminine that wasn't, that's, that I don't think is natural for me. Right. Cause I've always been on defense mode, probably my whole life. So I had to ac- learn how to access this playfulness and this joyfulness. And then once I get it, Skylar like follows me around the house. Like, it's like, I know I'm in the right spot when like, he like, he'll just literally start to follow me. Like, and that's like, so we dive deeply into like, what's the feminine and who is like, what is the feminine nature that God created? Cause God created male and female. Right. Yeah. And not that male men are all masculine and women are all feminine, but we both have an intermix of both. But sometimes it didn't work for me, at least when I was a woman and I was a hundred percent masculine. It just didn't work. Um, and a lot of women come in and they're achievers and they're drivers, like, and they run businesses that I work with and they feel like there's just something, but they want to be cherished at home, Mm -hmm. right? They want to be nurtured at home. But that woman driver achiever that comes home won't be cherished and nurtured and like taken care of if she walks in the same way. (laughs) You know, and I think no matter who, whether you have that driver side or you don't, every woman wants to be cherished. We all want to be pursued. Yeah. I think that that is something that is innate in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we work through how, how could you create that? How could you create a place where you are pursued? Mm -hmm. And some women are like, Oh no, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. Like it is totally possible. And it's not up to him. Right. Like you could, like, we have so much control as women. I don't know. Like, I like that side because I like to be in control, but we have so much control in women and how our husbands respond to us and how they show up for us. Like one of the things we talk about is receiving, like receiving, like, how do you receive? Like, yeah. and it's so easy for you to be like, Oh no, I don't need help. Or, Oh no, don't do this for me. Or, Oh no, like I've got it. Or no, do it that way. Or don't do it this way. You know? And your husband's like, all right, well, I'm not going to do it anymore. Right. Clearly you want to do it your way. Guilty. Guilty, guilty. Oh, that one. You, know, like, you can do this. Well, wait, let me control exactly how you do Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's part of the journey that I take them on. And then the second day we work through our bodies um, and body shame. And Brene Brown in one of her books says 99% of women have body shame. And so with their naked body, one way, shape, or form, we have everything to say about, oh, this shouldn't look like this. And this shouldn't look like this. Like it was for me, it was like this area of my leg and butt. And Take just the like, photo the right way. So my ankle looks exactly <laughs> perfect. Yeah. 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 Or, or my stomach shouldn't be like this or like my structure mark shouldn't be there. Yeah. Or like, oh my art, like even, even before we started the video, I'm like, I don't like how my arms look. I need to wear a jacket. Like, yeah. but we, work through, I work through our relationships with our bodies. And like, because if we're not, if we're like, Oh, like I I don't like it. You can just imagine how that comes off to our husbands. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we teach them how to respond to us. Mm -hmm. Right. And Skylar's like, Hey, he's like, I don't, Skylar always would say like, I don't care what size you are, babe. If you just 
own it. Like I'll think if you think it's hot, I'll think it's hot. If you don't think it's hot, then I won't think it's hot. He's like, are you sure you want to make that comment right now? It's like, I'm really careful with what I say out loud and I try and control it for me, but in front of him, because like I help influence how he sees me. He's like, I want to see you positively, Mm -hmm. but if you're constantly critiquing yourself, my focus will naturally go there also. Well, it's the way we ask it too. Do you like this? And you, we make the face. <laughs> yeah. If you say, "Hey, look at me," it's a different confidence yes. that they want, and they thrive off of that. Yes. So it's and incredible. So when a woman walks out of this event, she's just she's lighter, right? She's freer. She's like, "All right, I don't have to carry this stuff anymore." And then she's like, "Oh, and look at this!" Right? <laughs> and she just walks out and is able to receive love and give love and like live in her identity of who God's called her to be in such a more vibrant and beautiful way. It's amazing. And so who can go? Can anybody show up? Can anybody attend this event? Does my husband have to be a part of Rise Up Kings? So that's a new development. So yes, it used to be that you had to be in the Rise Up Kings family and then I would work with the spouses. But um, just recently we began to open it up so that anybody can come. We talk a lot about marriage and we talk a lot about um, our identity in Christ. So oftentimes the women that are come are believers, like they believe in Jesus Christ and that he died for our sins. Um, And we, cause I go over foundational Christian principles out Mm -hmm. of the Bible um, and everyone is welcome to come. Amazing. Why would I want to choose to come to Rise Up Queens instead of a different event? What, what Mm. would really lead me to go to that event. If I had one event to choose this year and I'm looking at four different events and Rise of Queens is one of them, Mm. why am I choosing to go to Rise of Queens? (laughs) That's a good question. Um, I think you would come to Rise of Queens. um, Well, it would depend on why you're going to an event, Mm -hmm. right? Like, so if you're looking, if you're like, man, like, I just know that there's more, like, you're like, oh, I want to show up this way, Mm -hmm. but I don't. Right. Like I keep not like I know there's more. That would be maybe one reason. Right. Because we get to the underneath of like underneath of issues like feeling anxious or feeling lonely or pushing people away is just a symptom Mm -hmm. to what's happening. Mm -hmm. So we address what's underneath. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, like I live like I don't in any way, shape or form, I am not, um, near perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. I am on this journey alongside all of these women. I might be a couple steps further along and I've worked through some of these Mm -hmm. things, but like everything that we talk about is stuff that I've like intensely worked through in my life and become better at and feel strong enough to teach in Mm -hmm. so that when someone comes in, it's not just like, Oh, we created this thing and it works like, like, no, this, like this really works. And we are really living this out. The women that have journeyed with me from even from June until now, I'm still working with some of them because we have more advanced programs and then follow-ups that they can do. They are like 180 degree, if not 360 degree different Mm -hmm. women, how they show up in their marriages, how they walk in their confidence in themselves, like how they can process through challenges and problems when they do run into a challenge or a problem or they're, they're, they're so much more aware of their thinking and how they show up. Like they've, they're different women. So it works. Like it really works. And so if I, if I attend a rise at Queens event, it's not done, right? It's not, I just, Show up, two-day event, go home, hope it works. There's Mm -hmm. more follow-up to it to help hold me accountable. Yep. After the first two-day event, um, there's a deeper dive that we go into. So there's a three-day deeper dive. And then from that three-day deeper dive, we have a six-month mastermind that we will integrate all of the concepts into over the course of the next six months. And one group finished their six months and they're like, we don't want to stop. So we, we did a hybrid model. So they're continuing on for another six months and then getting together for another event. So yeah, it, it, you can have support and really integrate it in. It doesn't have to be a one-time thing. Okay. So tell me, you shared a little bit in the beginning, but tell just us a little bit more about your story. You mentioned um, why you feel equipped to share this and to teach this. So Please share a little bit more, a little bit more about your experience um, and how you would want to encourage women to join alongside you. Um, So before I met Skylar, um, I was in a relationship and had built a company with um, a business partner Mm -hmm. and we got married for a year and I completely demasculated him. Uh, Nothing he did was ever good enough for me. 
I wanted it done my way. I wanted him to do it my way. I wanted him to be me. Like I, I, I essentially, I wanted him to be me, <laughs> but in a male version, yeah. I was like, look, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Very clear. Right. <laughs> and it's like, I set this standard and just realized in that short time of being married, but the long time of being in a relationship of like how to do it wrong. Hmm. And so as I got married to Skylar, I was like, okay, like I know God didn't design the woman to be the leader. Right. But I didn't trust. I had to learn how to trust. I had to learn how to relinquish control. I had to learn how to like have faith that God gave me this man and like, he's not perfect. And I, I'm not perfect. Like, and I can't expect him to be perfect, but that's what I was doing. It was like, I couldn't have, I I had no faith. Like I wasn't living in faith. I was living in fear 100% of the time. And and so when I, I love working with like the driver, the driver woman, that's just like that. Cause I know her so <laughs> I, can relate. I know her so well. And I've known the steps that I've had to take in order to begin to surrender control and how to learn how to trust. I mean, I remember Skylar and I had built a restoration company together. And at one point I, I handled all the details. He's like the visionary, mm-hmm. right? So it was, it was funny because we thought we were so similar for mm-hmm. the longest time. And the thing that we're similar at is that we're both drivers, but the way we execute is 100% different. <laughs> like he's all over the place, like squirrel, nuts, squirrel. Like, you know, like, but, but big vision constantly changing. Like he can change on the drop of a dime. And I am like rigid and like get angry when things change. Right. Like, and I'm very methodical, like he's methodical too, but just the way we execute, execute is 100% different. Mm-hmm. And I was giving up my last meeting in this company because I was stepping out of the company <clears throat> and I about had like a midlife crisis. Like I, I did yeah. essentially kind of have like my own silent solo midlife crisis because I had to fully trust in this man to take care of me. Like it literally felt like life and death. Yeah. Like it was all I was doing was giving up a meeting and he was running the company, but this was like life or death for me. <laughs> And I had recognized at a time in our relationship as I was stepping out that I started coaching back then. Mm. And I feel like I was a good coach. Um, if you're one of my old clients, go ahead and comment and say yes. <laughs> um, I feel like I was a good coach. Kindly comment. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and then I was at an event and I realized like, oh my gosh, like I did coaching because I was good at it, but deeply I was doing it so I could have a plan B. Like I unconsciously didn't trust him and didn't trust. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to build up this coaching company and I'm going to do this. And, but at the heart of it was like this distrust. And it's funny. And it was like validated. We were at a Tony Robbins event and Tony said how he said, women in the room, raise your hand. If you were taught to never rely on a man, raise your hand. And the whole entire room raised their hand. Wow. And it was like, I was like, oh my goodness, right? This is like, this is a cultural thing that we, so I've had to work through all that stuff. We worked through, um, Skylar cheated on me in the beginning of our relationship. We worked through me not like raging out on him and trying to control him, like with anger and with manipulation and with nagging and with complaining. And like, there's just so many things yeah. that we've worked with. There's just a better way. So that is why I feel extremely equipped yeah. to run this event because we figured it out. We're on Skylar and I have this cycle where we just feed into each other. Like we both, one of, we met someone and he was like, my goal Skylar is to out give you. And that's mm-hmm. how I feel like in our relationship, we are constantly like, I got a message from him this morning. Like, Hey, what can I take off your plate? And his plate is beyond full. And I'm like, how are you even saying this to me right now? <laughs> right. But like, yeah. we look out for the other person in a way that I don't see in couples. Mm-hmm. I see couples withholding from each other. Mm-hmm. I see couples waiting for the other spouse to do it. And then they'll do it. Mm-hmm. I see couples bringing distrust and frustration and past events into the current and just waiting to see what's going to happen. Literally almost most of them are one leg in If we're honest, like they're one leg in and one leg out. And so I have a heart for that because I know, I know what that is. Like I get that. And I lived that way for a long time and it's so much better on the other side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so much more fun to support one another yes. strongly. And yes. Yeah, yeah. And so the community of women that continue on is strong, right? They've been through challenges. They've been through infidelity. They've been through porn addictions. They've been through things together and they know 
what rest are, like they know what's possible and they're all going to achieve it together. And so when one's struggling, they're not like, oh, go divorce, divorce your husband or get out of the relationship. They don't give each other those outs. So like, all right, how are you showing up? And what's your responsibility in this? And what are you going to do about it? Because yeah. we can control us, right? We can't control them. Mm -hmm. So the community, as you continue on, is so powerful. Well, and I think it's, I love the way that you say, I'm here walking alongside them. It's not, I'm just leading these events. Yeah. It's not, I'm just showing them, I'm bringing a speaker in here and there, or I'm, I'm telling them what should be done. It's, I've, I've gone through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was broken through it, but this is what I learned. And I, I want mm -hmm. to share that so others can learn and lock, walk alongside you. Oh yeah. Which is Often incredible. I'm yeah. like, Hey, this is where I feel like you can always, Skylar can always get me to go controlling when he drives, man. Like, <laughs> It is like money and like driving are like my two triggers were like, I'll just go into psycho mode of like, Oh, don't do this. And don't do this. And don't do it. like fear instantly fear grips me. So I, yeah. So often it's a conversation where like, we're working through a topic, but I'm working through the topic just alongside, like I have fresh stories every time. Right. <laughs> and, and I think like in part of me never wanted to share that. Cause I was like, Oh, I have to be perfect if I'm going to do this, but I don't like, and like G Jesus was the one perfect person. Like, and I am not the female version like by any <laughs> means but I'm aware of what's going on mm -hmm. and what triggers me and continue to work and grow and so the ladies haven't been let down by that they've they've been like oh my gosh you're actually real and we're going through this together <laughs> so I you've gone through all of my questions but if I'm on the edge of trying to be a part of rise up Queens community and I'm thinking I might wait a few months what would be one what would be one piece of advice that you would love to share for someone to just start now, start now with their marriage with themselves. And mm -hmm. just as a, as a female, just speaking to that audience saying one piece of advice to start, what, what would you share? <laughs> I think you said it kind of inherently in the question. It's, it's so easy to say, well, I want to go work on my marriage. So I'm going to go to a marriage retreat, mm -hmm. right? I want to work with my husband. And what I've found to be so much more impactful is when I work on me first, mm -hmm. when I get whole as a woman first, as who I am, I come into the marriage retreat completely different. I come into the union together differently. And so what I would say is that if you're on this growth journey, your husband might not be in the same spot. Cause sometimes when we're like, Oh, I want to do it. Like I want to grow. I want to do this. You're like, come on, babe. And they're like, <laughs> time out, time out. Like, where are you going? Like, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So, Cause some ladies have said, well, I'm waiting for my husband to go to rise up Kings first yeah. and then I'll go to rise up Queens. But like, what if you just took the lead in that and didn't say like, Hey, come on. Or like you, you were just like, Hey, I, I want to get whole for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause if you're a mom, like it's desperately important for me to get whole because I'm passing down those tendencies to my children. Mm -hmm. I pass down my perfectionism mm -hmm. to my children. Mm -hmm. I pass down my, um, thinking that I get love or I'm deserving when I do a good action to my children. I pass down, um, any insecurities that I have or my emotions or like my, my, I have a tendency to anger. Like I pass that down. So like if you're waiting and you have children, like you don't, you only have so much time where they are moldable and shapeable and then they mean. develop habits and they develop patterns. They watch you. Yes. They see what you're doing, how you're acting. Yes. Yeah. So like, as a, like if you're not aware of that stuff, so like you're like time is ticking for them. So like mm -hmm. oftentimes we won't do it for ourselves. But we'll do it for other people. Mm -hmm. We'll do it for them. Yeah. <laughs> do it for them because you're affecting people around you. And if you're watching this video, you probably are a leader. So more people are probably watching you than what you think. Mm -hmm. And the ability after you gain these tools to make an impact of those around you is so much greater. That's amazing. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing about Rise Up Queens. I am, I'm excited to hear more <laughs> about it and hear about your heart. I think that's the best part um, that I've been able to witness and see is the heart behind it because there's, um, it's real. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's so much of what we need now are just real people. <laughs> Let's walk through life together in a real way. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Jessica, for starting Rise Up Queens. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Jessica. Thank you.